If I ruled the world. Okay, so episode seven, our guest is Kevin Caputo from Stereo Assassin, uh, also Disciplinary Action. And we wanted to tag on an intro to this to uh, talk about it a little bit. Uh, it was a great in- interview. Uh, yeah, he's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I, I didn't know the the way, I don't want to say it was an experiment, but it was like uh, someone who might seem like a left or right turn <laughs> for <laughs> us to have um, because he seems to be so outspoken politically. And, um, you know, the way you told me, I, I didn't really know how, how to take the guy, but as soon as I met him, just took to him because he was pretty genuine. And even if I didn't agree with whatever his politics were, um, I just saw that he was kind of like a super cool, driven guy. And, and I think most importantly, a musician. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, there was a few reasons, I think, when we, we you know, we try and figure out what guests we want to have. And there's the way we started the podcast with some of the obvious uh, guests that I'm friends with and from the Long Island hardcore scene. With Kevin, it was interesting to me because Kevin is like a one man army. I mean, with the promotions he does, um, he does the music all by himself. He's the type of guy who's got, you know, 40,000 Facebook friends and tens of thousands of views on Facebook. And there's something about the style of Kevin that reminds me of some of the music I grew up on. Just him in particular coming from a history of not being politically correct, coming from more of like alpha male the way and we brought it up in in the interview but i liked you know peter Steele from typo negative or harley flanagan from the chrome eggs or um even some of the original murphy's law stuff i mean he's singing the opposite of what punk rockers were singing about he was singing about ronald reagan yeah so in the music that kevin does to be a trump supporter is sort of an anomaly and i've always been interested in people who just say go fuck yourself and that is what kevin does and i know with that he also has a lot of controversy that surrounds him there's people that put up memes that he's racist and i've known him for a long time he's not he's not racist and but i wanted to have him on for him to instead of having a video where he just talks about what he wants and there's no response or a facebook post where he then gets into it and that's and he'll get into it i feel like the the motivation that he does his music with this one man army is the same motivation that he will attack someone who slights him right and if he feels slighted i feel like he definitely maybe to his detriment (laughs) might not let some of that stuff go i think he's definitely ready to go to war but he's also ready to be cool and friends with anyone who wants to be friends with him that's what i got with him but if you want to do the the flip side he'll do that too yeah i mean, it, it, to his detriment in a way but another way it's he's found all these fans that are like hey we secretly like trump or we overtly like trump or whatever it is so he just kind of went for it and then i i thought it was interesting cuz he when we decided to do the interview and me and him were writing back and forth i made it clear that you know i don't want to have a debate about politics. That's not what this podcast is. And you're more, I would say, for lack of a better word, liberal. For lack of a better word, I'm libertarian. For lack of a better word, he's conservative. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like a joke, like a libertarian, a liberal, and a conservative walk into a room. Absolutely. And what happened? We talked a little bit about it and moved on and talked about music. And yeah. then he got into like a couple of things he didn't like about Trump. He was very honest and we joked a lot and then it moves on in, into music and his next thing that he wants to do. And that's, it felt like in an interesting way that was like, wow, th- this is the platform that I like. You you have this platform to explain yourself or hang yourself or, or whatever you want. Yeah, we, we gave him the rope and, you know, we asked him whatever questions and I feel like he answered so much stuff. You know, I think anyone who questions him on any level that actually listens might feel differently or, you know, might reinforce what they already knew. Yeah. You know, so like uh, his personality is definitely comp- like, you know, it, it, it's his episode. You'll hear. Yeah. And I, th- I think you and I talked about we're a little biased because we... Yeah, you grew up on Long Island and you have friends that, you know, you'll fuck with each other and it's funny. Maybe somebody hears it 
from the outside listening in, they're going to think you're something you're not. You're yeah. a bully or you're a racist or whatever. It It's almost like, you know, that, that's something that I'm kind of used to. So it's, it doesn't it doesn't offend me the way that Kevin is and and what he does. So it was an opportunity to just have him on and all, all joke around, but not get into a situation where we have to like butt heads about how we feel nah. politically. And, and also like, you know, save those tags for the people who deserve it. Yeah, you're right. You yeah. know, uh, otherwise it's like, it just, it like waters down and minimizes things. It's like, Save it for the people who, you know, definitely deserve it because I'm sure those people have no problem accepting that term, you know, if right. you want to call them that. So as far as racist means, obviously. Yeah. If you want to see his personality, I think it really comes across on on what that Impractical Jokers episode that we, we, ta- <laughs> we talk about. Um, the guy's just like fucking Long Island as fuck. Yeah. You know, a character. And uh, I had a really, I I didn't know what to expect from the episode, but I I came away just thinking like that was a really fun episode and uh, super happy to have met him. Yeah. So with that, let's, uh, let's jump into it. All right. Episode seven. Hello and welcome to episode seven of If I Rule the World podcast. And we are sitting here with our guest, Kevin Caputo, Stereo Assassin. What's up, guys? How you doing? Doing good. Now, Kevin, I'm going to paint a picture here. <laughs> here we go. Paint that picture. <laughs> now, this might normally be the time where we would do some type of intro for you. But I want to tell you a story. Okay. This is going to help. Okay. All right. So, uh, I have a guy I work with. His name is, uh, well... We'll leave his name off. We'll call him Peter, right? Okay. And Peter, he's not from our musical world. Let's just say he doesn't know the guests we've had on, but he takes an interest in the podcast. He says, so who's your next guest? And I say, oh, it's this guy, Kevin Caputo. So he's like, yo, well, what is he like? What does he do? So I tried explaining you. Let me tell you something. <laughs> it's not that easy. So I'm like, oh, well, actually, he was on Impractical Jokers. I'm trying to think of some mainstream thing I could... Right tie you into and he goes oh all right so he googles your name and practical joke is he's like oh yeah i saw this episode i remember this but um come here what's all this other stuff that it just came up under kevin caputo's name and then it was really hard to explain you kevin so i figured what i'm going to do is to start this is to let you explain what you're doing these days with stereo assassin we'll get into the controversies the trump stuff yeah. the history everything and you're signing and all of that. We'll start with what you're doing today. You explain yourself. What I'm doing today, uh, um, well, if you want to talk about that other stuff that that guy saw is... No, no, we'll get to that. I want you to start at present day. Stereo Assassin, what's going on? Right now, I just um, I signed a contract. Well, I'm in the process of signing a contract with Cataclysm Records. It's um, Tim from MOD is the vice president. I know uh, any metalhead knows MOD. And um, another guy named Randy, who um, he's some kind of bizarre um, (laughs) hip-hop lawyer who gets guys off gun charges and I think helped Eminem get signed and make his first video or something like that. By the way, not a bad way to go if you're a lawyer. You just sort of hang around MCs and just see who gets into trouble you know it's yeah not, I not mean, a bad way to go with your it's career like, it's, 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 it's guaranteed it's business. right up there with like a mob lawyer <laughs> that, that, yeah, that's exactly maybe. it that's exactly <laughs> it so i'm working with these guys i uh met with them actually it started because um tim had um from mod he uh, approached me last year i didn't know the guy he heard my music or something like that and he's um, had his own label called Trip Squad Records, and he's putting out a compilation. He had a Hardcore Kids compilation of all hardcore music, which was pretty cool. And then he's releasing a, a, a compilation called Metal on Metal, 
and he asked me if I wanted to be on it. And um, like the list is amazing. It's it's all American thrash bands, like from the early '80s, like Raven. Actually, and they got guys from uh, Soulfly, Bobby Gustafsson from Overkill. Mm-hmm. So they got like some big new names and some really big old names. And um, um, so, what do you mean by by compilation? Like, they're these are already older songs, or I don't know what any. No, they're they're um, they're all new songs. All new songs. My, I contributed a new song, um, and he was telling me Bobby got together with the guy from Soulfly. Okay, and uh, they recorded stuff. So, so it's all new music. Yeah, I, and metal, I, metal on metal is what I'm thinking of, and that's like an Anvil reference. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think actually somebody from Anvil actually plays on it. I okay, mean, then yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the art cover is pretty cool. It's got two bloody daggers over the Declaration of Independence, and um, I sent in a track called. I got. We'll get into it, but um, like um, I tend to be a little political. And I, I just got, yeah, I just got a little. <laughs> a little? I got Nancy this. Pelosi's a little political. <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> I got this thing with uh, Shia LaBeau. He just rubs me the wrong fucking way. Okay. And uh, I've been challenging him to a fist fight for the Wait, last two the years. Actor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been challenging him publicly to a fist fight on Facebook. And a funny story is I get a phone call one night from some woman from Hollywood that is... Um, she was kind of vague. She didn't really want to say what she did, but she was involved in the Hollywood scene and had access to Shia LaBeouf's management or whatever. And she asked me if what I was saying was real. I was like, yeah, I'd love to fight the guy. And she said, you know, we could really make this some kind of big thing and donate it to charity. And I was like, if he wins, he could donate it. If I win, I'm keeping, keeping it. it. <laughs> and so she said, if you're serious, I'll reach out. So she actually called me back two weeks later and said, I talked to his manager and she said he's unavailable. And I said, okay, what does that mean? She said, it means either he's scared or he's in rehab. So it's not going to happen. Okay. By the so, way, the next thing that's going to come up on Google. This yeah, thing. that is yeah. fucking <laughs> hilarious that you're the <laughs> one to fight Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, <laughs> so so the best way I got it, I the song I gave to this compilation on Trip Squad Records, which will be out in April, um, is called A Song for Shia, and it just kind of um, rips rips apart um, liberal politics. Okay. Not him in general, just, you know, the name sounded cool, right. and... Uh, it just rips apart liberal gen, uh, liberal politics, and it's brutally heavy. It's a great song. So you, you did the vocals. Like, I did. I know, the, I know I, sometimes you 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 do like samples and stuff. So yeah, I did. I did the vocals myself. Um, I had actually. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember Joey Lotus Photo. Uh, Joey Lodes, they call him. He was the guitarist for Spooge back in the 90s, okay, which yeah. was an amazing band. And, and actually, anybody who's heard the song, I've let a few people hear it, like the record company and stuff, and everybody asks me, who the fuck did this lead? Because mm-hmm. Joey, although he's a chiropractor now, he's like, he could have been one of the best guitarists in the world. And people are like, this lead is just like, unbelievable so i'm like it's this guy joey loads he used to play in a band called spooge they used to come out with viking hats with dildos taped to them and <laughs> porn mo- mu- uh, movies in the background but uh so from there they like that song so much they text me last week they're like meet us at the uh new york lot palace hotel we want to offer you a contract so i how, went down how does like, how did you come across uh, d- d- this record label? Did you seek them, or did they find you to, to make you this offer? Because I'm always wondering, like, what a record label does for an artist, like, on like today, you know? Especially these days, yeah. I, I honestly don't remember, but I think Tim reached out to me, because I don't, I, I mean, I knew a VOD, um, not VOD, a MOD, but I didn't know Tim. So I believe he reached out to me, um... What happens is, <laughs> because of my controversies with um, politics, um, people don't realize on Facebook, where I do most of my work, um, algorithms don't see good or bad. They don't see if a thousand people say right. you suck or you're good. They right. just see interest. So instead of 
2,000 people seeing it. They see my name tagged a lot. They don't let 10,000 people see it. So that's how I think he came across me because he had mentioned he was impressed with my um, fan size on Facebook. Okay. And that is a, a thing that you do. You take on everybody that even remotely <laughs> wants to say anything bad about you on, you know, whether it's on your, your page or hearsay or, or otherwise, whether it's a drum and bass artist or, like you said, someone interested in liberal politics or whatever. But is it, do you do that because that's the end goal, the algorithm? Or is it like this is, you have a goal to really destroy liberal politics? Or maybe it just depends on the day? <laughs> um, it might depend on the day, but I think you have a point. It, uh, I'm a little smarter than I look. Um, I know that fueling the fire gets me more publicity. Right. And there's no such thing as bad publicity. There have been times, though, where I'm not trying to go out and crush liberalism single-handedly. That's impossible. But there are times, though, that people have been really vile, and then yeah. I've taken it personally, and I've, and I've went after them. Um, for the most part, though, um, I go after them because, uh, I, listen, I get a kick out of it, right. going back and forth with them, and I also know that the angrier they get and the more they write about me, it attracts more people to my page. I, George, I can't tell you how many times fans have written to me and said, Dude, I heard all these people talking shit about you, that you were a scumbag and your music sucked, and I went to your page. Your music rocks, bro. You got a yeah. new fan. So it's it's part um, business and part pleasure. Right. Yeah, so. It, yeah, and, and what when we were originally talking about doing this interview, you know, I, I brought up to you some of the reasons why I wanted to interview you. Yeah. And part of it was a history that you and I remember when we were younger, that there was bands out there that weren't politically correct maybe they came from a little bit more like alpha male go fuck yourself like the billy milanos from mod sod peter Steele from carnivore typo negative and these are some of the things that in a way i miss a little bit and i always respect it it might not be what i did in my music and we might not even agree 100 percent politically but that thing I don't see much in music anymore where you're like this is me go fuck yourself we can do this all day <laughs> yeah um listen let's just be clear I've been um over the years been um prodded and begged by people um to not do what I do to stop that and I've tried but I can only be me Right. You know what I mean? And and I mean that sincerely. I've I've literally tried to stop with the um politics. I've I've tried to take politics out of stereo assassins page and separate it. That's just way too much work. You gotta understand on Facebook to do a public page, um, it takes a lot of hours and a lot of man time to get interest and keep people interested. Right. I've done a lot of research on it. Um, it's unless you have a lot of time to spend on a public page, it's not really, or you're like some super, super Hollywood star. You're not really going to be able to generate that much interest. It's okay. not like a personal page. I, We're I, learning. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> so um, wanted to separate it and start a, a political but it was just, it's too taxing to do two public pages. And to me, Stereo Assassin is more important. And you know what? My fans seem to dig it. And if the people don't like it, you know, there are people be like, you know, fuck you, you voted for Trump. I hate your music. Right. You know, all right, great. But then there's six other people who will say, your music rocks and you voted for Trump. And then there's people who say, I don't dig your music, but I love your political stuff on here. Right. And probably vice versa. Right. I don't like your political stuff, but I like your music. Exactly. But let's let's talk about Trump because that is a thing you've hitched your wagon to. Yeah. You know, it's not just saying I'm a conservative or I like small government. You're saying that's that's my guy. I'm saying that's my guy because he represents what I believe in. Mm -hmm. uh, Everybody so shocked at the things that he say and, and that he says. And to me, it's like we voted the guy that you have beers with 
at the local bar at the end of the, at the end of the week, just a regular guy. Right. And um, you know, he's for sm- he he. I didn't. It's not like I have a crush on Trump. He just represents what I feel is good for this country. And um, I, I got to say, honestly, when it first when he first got into office. You know, the uproar was overwhelming, and I, I felt a little scared because, you know, let, let's be honest, the guy does some stupid-ass shit. I'll even admit that. Of course, yeah. You know, he's got to learn to shut up, and he got to stop exaggerating and stuff. But fast forward a year later, and he's, a, if, if you don't watch... Every if you don't watch only the mainstream news, he's done a lot for this country. The bottom line is, when people are working and making money, people don't care about other stuff. And he's bringing a lot of money into the country, and a lot of people are working. Very, sim- very simply, by deregulating um, all the restrictions that Obama did. He made it easy for business. See, that's what, you know, there's a lot of different type of people who like Trump. And, you know, I worked for myself for many years, and a lot of people that worked for themselves, a lot of the business people, even people who were minorities that I was in contact with, I was surprised. They were all Trump supporters. And they just, they weren't super political. They didn't pay attention a lot. They just saw an opportunity for, for more, hopefully for more business and stuff. This was before he got elected. Some people just like him because he's, you know, represents himself as an alpha male. And they just think that's what a president is supposed to be. And they like that. You know, there's a, there's a, you know, across the board. And I'm always curious when I talk to Trump supporters, you know, which way is it? Did you come into this as a conservative, as a small government guy, and you're like, Trump gets it? Or more of like cult of personality? You're like, this is what the co- country needs? I, I came into it as I've always been a patriot. I was I served in the army and there's there's people out there on there's literally people out there on the internet who are um frantically for months trying to disprove that I was in the army which I find hysterical. <laughs> okay. They're demanding me to show my DD214 which is my separation papers but I won't do it. But they're trying really hard. So that's just I just wanted to mention that. I did serve. I served in Korea in 85 and 86. Anyway, um um I I come I look at Trump, I come towards him as a patriot. He just has the same beliefs that I believe in, which is less government, um, less restrictions, and more free market. And um, I'm vehemently against socialism. I just don't see where socialism works. My fiancé from Canada, right? Everybody's always saying Canada has the best medical, it's free. Yeah, but you're going to wait a year and a half before you can see somebody. That's the price you pay. So you might die before you get to see your free doctor. Yes. I mean, what, what's interesting about Trump, though, and I, the deregulation is true and, and the you know reducing corporate tax rates. You know, there are certain things that come from traditional conservatism. But what Trump has done has changed conservatism there's more of like a trumpism which is less patriotic but more nationalistic yeah. there, there's a difference and then you know trump doesn't want free market health care he wants trump care trump doesn't want free market economics he wants tariffs on solar panels he wants to sort of pick and choose the businesses the way we disliked obama doing it i'm i'm not a republican i'm more I'm I'm an independent, but I right. I'm, I'm actually a registered independent. Yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah. We and we we yeah. talked about that, and, and I think I mostly agree with libertarians, but I refuse to like you know join a party. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I just noticed that the free market speak of Donald Trump looks more like you know, and you could, you could pick out a few things, but generally it's more of like I'm the president. I know how to run the economy, and it's kind of what Republicans have been saying for eight years, giving free market economics lessons, and then it's like, wait, it's our guy, and then Fox News is like propaganda for the state. It's yeah. like a, it's it, it, it just keeps flip flopping, and if someone's like, I just like Trump for these reasons, sometimes I'm like, eh, yeah, whatever. But when it comes to the conservative bend or the small government bend, that's where I I I don't know that. It makes a lot of sense. I don't think he. I don't actually think he is really conservative. I think he's right. very liberal on a lot of social issues. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I really, all I could say is, look where we are today with um, um, my minorities. I think maybe specifically African Americans. I just 
saw on the news or I read somewhere that it's at the, the lowest it's ever been in the country, unemployment. Is that the lowest it's ever been for minorities or African Americans? I, I can't remember which it is. And overall, it's the lowest it's been since 1973. Yeah, unemployment. And of course, the liberals want to give that credit to Obama, but the the truth is, with the stroke of a pen, he deregulated. Listen, well, I'm going to give you an example. He mm-hmm. had the um, he um, those water restrictions, the waterway, the you know. Pr- water protection regulations um, Obama put in place. Um, he, Trump deregulated them, and everybody thought like he was wanted to destroy the oceans. Mm-hmm. But really, if you looked into it, which I did was, some of the restrictions were ridiculous. If, if a farmer had a, um, a farm that was susceptible to flooding every eight years under Obama's Clean Water Act, that you couldn't farm on there. It was it was a water it was a waterway that right. fell under that protection. So he was putting people out of business. Now a guy who might have a flood every ten years should not be put out of business because of some ridiculous rule Obama put in place. And and so Trump took away those ridiculous yeah, they, rules. Regulations work. That regulations are are good. There has to be some. And you, and you would agree. Most small government guys would agree. Some regulation. Of but course. they just add on more and more and never take away any of the old ones. So if you start in a business, you're dealing with things from the 40s that you have to deal with. But the the the, the thing about what changes, so it's like, like the parties like change and what they're interested in, it's, it's, it's sort of like... Um, all these things, you know, when the Republicans were running, you know, last year or more than a year ago, it was the stock market's a bu- bubble because of the Federal Reserve. And they're right. They're right that it's a bubble and they're right that it's going to come crashing down. Oh, it's going to. as soon as he gets into office, now it's Trump. And, and you know what it is like with me? And we were talking about this offline a little bit. Is like it's just hard as someone who believes in small government to think anybody's good like a politician will just you know jump in front of a parade and be like hey look at my parade and trump is definitely that's, like that oh, that's that's that's, that's that's where i'm at right I, I that's never barack obama cared. that's george bush that's bill clinton and and like trump reminds me more of bill clinton than he does a free market milton friedman ec- economist and when he does do something good i'm like good go back to work nobody gives me a fucking parade when i do my job you're, you're a politician so even if it was my best friend or my dad that started running for president, I feel like now you're suspect. Now I'm critical of you. And this is sort of where I see the Republicans sort of like, they're like that. And then as soon as their guy is in, then it's like, well, we're going to wear hats that say Trump. And it's like, you know, maybe like a jersey for the federal government. I'm like, where did that come from? I thought we were against government. You right. know? Uh, well, listen, my, my, my personal view is, you know, we can all agree um, politics is based on, you have to be a liar you're a liar they're all yeah, liars right. absolutely and, yeah. and, and, and all of them are guilty you know you can find just as many people who sexually harass as liberals as republicans but every time something comes up the other side jumps on them like they're, they're scot free and they right. never did anything wrong I, I gotta look at just what's going on today and, and what I see today is um Trump has kept the promises for the people that he's voted for. And I, the world didn't explode, right? Um, lesbians weren't, had, didn't have their doors kicked in and weren't dragged off to prison, which I actually heard lesbians saying was going to happen. And, right, right. You let know, me, check, like let me check Google real quick. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Kevin Caputo says. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm happy with what he's doing. I, I Listen, I understand why people don't like him. He's an yeah. arrogant, overinflated, you know, egotistical liar like the rest of them. He's right. just more he's he's just more of what they all are. Right. You know what I mean? He's a salesman. I've been he's around a, salesmen my whole life and I'm right. like this guy would sell you your own shit. <laughs> and he's like P.T. Barnum. I mean, he's so, just take whether you like him or not out of the picture, but masterful, masterful at getting what he wants. That's exactly right. But the, the problem with that doesn't make a good president. It doesn't make a good president. Necessarily. 
Well, it depends on if he's doing, you know, if he's putting you back to work, if he's doing something to help you get back to work. I think overall, nobody's going to be happy with everything. You can't make everybody happy. You can't. Yeah. But I think that he's doing a good job. And I think, and, and, and besides the f- financial part of it, what he's doing for America, I really do think he's bringing strength and integrity back. I, I, I think Obama destroyed the way America was looked at by the world. I mean, drawing lines in the sand and then, then letting people cross them. And he just let us get walked over. And he went on that apology tour all over the world when he was first year apologizing to countries for whatever America might have done to them. It did not leave a many Americans feeling proud of themselves. Mm-hmm. And now we have this fever of, of, of pa- patriotism and Some would call it nationalism, which gets a little iffy because being a Trump supporter um, and being very vocal about it, uh, um, it naturally gets knuckleheads thinking that I'm white power. Right. And I can't tell you how much, you know, I'll make a video and I'll get stuff privately like you've got to read this stuff and it's like the, really some vile and insensitive stuff right. about Jews and blacks and and um, I don't look at that stuff I don't look at that and I don't argue with these guys because I yeah. don't want them hating me too right. I just don't answer them back I just delete it and stuff like that I, I don't have I don't listen you want to talk about racism the only thing that I can say about racism is that there's biological differences in everybody. Doesn't make anybody better. Just right. makes us different. Right. And that's how I feel. I in no way, and this is a big thing that people love to run with. And I don't even think they think it's true. I think they, my hate is just use it because it's a weapon. Right. They like to call me a racist, and and I don't think that I've have I ever said some off colored insensitive jokes. Yeah, I don't think I've met anybody who never has. Right. But I would never look down. I never think any race is superior to another race. Right. And I would never hire some, if I owned a business, I would never hire a a guy because he was white and the other guy was black. It just wouldn't occur to me. Right. It's just not who I am. I wouldn't, if I, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, I have a lot of people who, for some reason, I'm always saying that I, I stick up for Israel. I stand with Israel. I'm a big supporter of Israel. I saw this, I was in Brooklyn, and I saw this little Jewish kid. Wait, but I thought you were a Nazi. Yeah, yeah I, I, I know. You know. They I got, got me papers right here in Google. Yeah, that's you, just lost, you just lost five fans right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> the guys who like me because they thought I was a Nazi are pissed. I'm not a Nazi. Um, if you looked at me, I'm Italian and I look like a Muslim terrorist. <laughs> but uh, there was this Jewish kid in Brooklyn who was coming from the doctor. And he was really thin and skinny and he had a yarmulke on and he was small and tiny and he was riding a really nerdy Pee Wee Herman bike and I saw him headed straight towards his gang of like thugs, teenage thugs. And uh, this kid was about 13 and I, and I said, I hope this kid has the brains to cross the street and he didn't. And they grabbed him and the kid was twice the size and there was about eight of them. They, he was probably about 13 or 14. They were like 16, 17. And uh, the one kid grabbed him and he smacked him in the face. And I just walked over and I grabbed this kid by the throat. And I said, smack me in the fucking face. I felt so bad for this yeah. kid. He was so, you know, because why? Because he, he had a yarmulke on. Now I figure I scared these kids off, but I forgot I'm in Brooklyn. So you get this, the one little kid in the crowd, yeah, the one little like, Italian yeah. kid. My brother's going to come and shoot you. Sure. And he starts making a phone call. Now I'm like, I'm in Brooklyn. They say they're going to come and shoot you. Somebody might come and shoot me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I make sure the kid's safe and I tell him to leave. And I start walking. These fucking kids are following me. My brother's coming to shoot you. My brother's. So now I'm thinking, Jesus Although in Christ. certain parts of Brooklyn these days, in hipster Brooklyn, they might be doing like a photo shoot. Right, right. Stay right there. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely was not Williamsburg. Yeah, okay, okay. And, um, Just to clear that up. So I saw a cop car, so I went over, I told him. I said, see these kids? I said, this is what's going on. So, you know, the cop, he says, what do you want me to do about it? So I'm going to tell you something. If they follow me on the subway, I'm going to throw them all on the railroad tracks. That's all I'm telling you. Yeah. So he said, all right, I'll take care of it. 
But um, yeah, this, they, so I hope that dispels the Nazi stories. Besides uh, this, yeah. you'll you'll remember this too. <laughs> That's a there great was, story. This there guy. was there was <laughs> you remember Jim Haight? Yeah, of course. Jim yep. Haight from Long Island was a big Nazi. He's still very active in Utah, as a matter of fact. You can find him online. He he runs some big yeah, that's a name I haven't heard in many white years. supremacist um organization out in Utah. Right. He's on T V all the time and everything. This guy was a big Nazi skinhead and he wanted to fuck up and we were at the angle. Okay. And he wanted to fuck up Zoid from Neglect, Neglect. Brian Beale. Mm -hmm. For no reason. And um, I don't know if you remember, I used to, used to be, I used to be a little off my rocker. I was probably a little high. That would indicate <laughs> that you're not off your rocker these days <laughs> by saying used to be. <laughs> and um, people were but afraid of Jim because he was a real Nazi. Like yeah. he professed to be a Nazi. He wanted, he wanted to kill blacks and Jews. And he wasn't you know. like a bigot. He was like. Talking about, you know, extermination right. of groups. Right. Was, you know, he's into them. And now he's there with his friends and, and he wanted to exterminate Brian. Mm -hmm. And nobody was really stepping up to him. And so I just said, okay, me, fight me. And he's a, he's a big guy. And, I, and because it was so long ago and I'm, I was high out of my fucking face, um, I don't remember if he got scared and pulled a gun and... and he took off, okay, or I beat the shit out of him. I can't remember, but I do remember. <laughs> I do remember, I remember. We all went back to Jeff Lanzetta from Disciplinary Actions House okay. and had a huge party. Okay. So maybe I did beat the shit out of him, and we all went back and celebrated. Celebrated like Vikings. <laughs> yeah, it was like um, the Berserkers, yeah, um, DA, um, um, Brian's band, um, Neglect, Neglect, and we all went back and had a big party. I remember that, yeah. So that Nazi stuff is just, it just doesn't fly. It, it's one of those words that liberals like to use to think that it's going to hurt somebody. But actually, George, they use it so much now, it holds no weight. It takes the teeth out of it when yes. you call everybody a racist. Yeah, yeah. There's no, you know, there's no conversation after that. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to, to engage. I mean, part of the way that you engage, though, is, I mean, it's not unlike Donald Trump. You know, you'll put up the, the 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 meme that says Nazi fuck, a picture of you that somebody else posted, and it's 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 interesting how fighting Jim hate that same thing where you're running after the Nazi on the street or in the streets of Brooklyn works really well for Facebook al algorithms. Like who the fuck knew? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that same zeal. Yeah. Exactly. Gets you a lot of fans, you know. So you know, <laughs> safely then, in your in 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 your home in uh in Oceanside, right? You right. don't have to run around Mineola or fucking. right, exactly. <laughs> and, and you know, people reach out to me all the time because they see some of the controversy and and they say, you know, Kevin, I just want you to know, we know you, or I know, well, we know you're not what these these people are saying you are, right? You know, um, so. People who know me know I'm not a Nazi. I'm not a racist. I'm, I, I'm just meeting you today. I like I can't like I'm enjoying this so much. <laughs> I think you, like I didn't know what to expect. George, you know, was telling me we we're going to talk to you. It's hard and to explain. You can. I was just yeah. like okay, and yeah. I mean, I, it's almost like I've known you for ten years. So I'm 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 that's a fan. awesome, bro. I'm a fan man. Thank you. Me and Sam talk about this a lot. That like when you grow up on Long Island, and I don't, I don't know, it's got to be everywhere. But like, and I grew I, up here. <laughs> you grew up, grew up on Long Island. You fuck with each other. Yeah. You rank each other out. Yeah. You, you know, it, it, a couple of your friends. You you pick on the worst shit about them. That's what you do. And then uh, these days, it's like those are the guys I loved. It's no big deal. You know, we it, it toughened you up a little bit. You, you you sometimes you fought. Sometimes you're good with your words. You know, in the end, that's kind of just what we did. And I feel like a lot of times now, some of it's lost just because Facebook, you're writing out things you're to each other. It. That's what it, it is. loses it's, all it's contacts. It's so visible. And it's, you know, you lose that privacy circle where that's how you interact. Now, people that maybe know you that live yeah. in Utah or fucking well, the Midwest. And it's virtue signaling. They're not hurt. They're just saying, hey, look at how good I am by being hurt exactly. and offended by that yeah. guy. And. We're just going to be, you know, it's my job to be outraged for you. Yeah, exactly. And that's <laughs> what happens. And the thing is, a lot of times, and we've all gotten caught up in it, and we've all done it, right? But, you know, as you move on, you get older, you, you, you're just like, this is, this is just funny. This is really no big deal. Like, somebody said the wrong word in a song, 
and they're done. Yeah. Some guy says the wrong thing to to somebody he works with, and they're fucking shoving him out the door. He doesn't have a job and anymore. And it's not even them. Be- it's like like a, a clan. A, like total group of people that have nothing to do even like let's say the Aziz and Sorry thing like right. it's like what that's none of our business <laughs> like at what point do you just look at yourself and think like I'm not gonna share this like not minimizing you know or, or anything I'm just saying like I just feel like certain things are just so private that it has nothing to do with us well a lot of these guys well a hundred percent of these guys almost um, who attack me um, don't know me, never met me, don't live around here. And they're just, you know, what I realized, uh, and somebody told me this a long time ago, the more successful you become and publicly successful, which Facebook is for me, yeah. um, the more people will have jealousy and contempt for you. Right. Especially an outspoken guy like me. Um, I'm, I'm an easy target. I got a big mouth. Um, like you said, in a lot of ways, I'm like Trump. I push Trump. I'm proud to be Trump and p- proud that I voted for him, proud to be American. And I, I am the antithesis of what a, um, a liberal or an Antifa is. I mean, I am the perfect target for them. The frustrating thing about this is like you were talking about, we would rank each other out or sometimes it gets serious. On Facebook, I can't do nothing. I, I'm telling you, George, some yeah. of these guys, I'd, I'd gladly do 60 days in jail to knock their fucking teeth out of their head. <laughs> but I've offered plane fares. I, I'll pay I for you. I saw your videos. You know? with, uh, some of the dr- this is some of the drum and bass <laughs> DJs that you had yeah. issues with. Yeah. They uh that that started a few years ago. Okay, okay. Uh, they they um got mad because I had a street team. I would give them free music. These right. kids would post my music, and some girl posted music on somebody's wall, and he got offended because she did it without permission. So he comes yelling at me. So I apologize to him. Next thing you know, I get twenty, thirty of these drum and bass crew, which is a very tight knit crew, yeah. and and but it's a very small genre okay and so they almost all know each other and even though it's all over the world not big in america in america though and they were saying the most vile reprehensible things to me right just because of this girl and then i started getting involved in it and i caught myself and i made a public apology video mm-hmm. and i deleted all of them and i forgot about it over the sun, that was three, four years ago. Over the summer, my page got hacked into and shut down. So I was using my fiance's page, and I posted my music on a wall, and one of these people pops up again, this piece of shit, and then it just starts all over again, all over again. All of them attacking me. It's the same bullshit. Um, it's funny. They all say that I buy my likes on Facebook. Listen, I'm a businessman. Every like on Facebook is a potential sale. Buying fake people will never get me a sale. Right. It's ridiculous. It's instead of and and it's always whenever they say that I look at them and their musicians, they always have you know, I got 40 almost 42,000 fans. They have like 3,000 fans. Right. Because instead of getting mad at me, why don't you say, hey, what did you do to get 3,000 fans? I'll gladly tell you. Right. I have people ask me all the time, like, what equipment you use? How do you get the sound? How do you promote yourself? I help these guys all the time. Right. But sometimes these guys are just so bitter because I'm an easy target. Instead of trying to pick my brain, it's just easy for them to hate me. And you're the way you are politically it's not like you're playing country music and that would just, right. you know, coincide. I mean, there is metal. A lot of metal fans might be aligned with some metal fans are aligned with you politically, but drum and bass getting to that. I'm going to assume generally mostly is not a bunch of sissies, not, you know, <laughs> the guys you would like to pal around. Nah, with. They're, 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 I got to be honest. Um, the ones that I've run into the, the, established artists, they're the guys with the vagina hats marching, <laughs> with the women you know what i mean i just i can't get behind them and 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 honestly it's the most frustrating part is i've given out my address i've i've offered to fly people out i really just want to get my hands on 
one of these guys who, who talks the way they talk on Facebook and let them see me in person and see if they'd say the same thing to my face. Right. And I know they wouldn't because... 99% no. No, no 99% no. They wouldn't. They absolutely wouldn't. They had this one guy, uh, this guy Gein, uh, drum and bass artist, a real prick. I mean, this guy, I, I liked his music. I bought his music, everything, but... He was one of the ones who came attacking me. Yeah. And very unprofessional. I mean, he's a worldwide artist. Right. And um, we talked on the phone and we thought we had settled it out. And then he's telling me over the past few months he's going to kick my ass and this and that and the other thing if he's ever in New York. Then I find out <laughs> last week on Instagram I see he was in New York. But he only tells me after he gets home. He's safe home in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, what, what what is his main gripe with you? Just the, specifically, let's say this person. My fingernails, my elbow. I don't know. Yeah, I I honestly think it's because I I've accomplished what I've accomplished with my music and the amount of fans I have and and the loyal fans. I think it makes some of these guys jealous. But Sam, you you gotta watch the videos because it's like. <laughs> The way he does it is such a Long Island thing. He like he. Uh, this he, guy's a Long Island. Yeah, he's like, fuck. wait, this guy. Look at his show. All right, look at his show. There's like 12 people there. All right, I'll give him. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. There's like there's like 20, 22 people. <laughs> now let's listen to what people say about game. And it's like it's this guy's video. Yeah. And he's breaking down like the game footage of yeah. this guy's video that he put out himself. And then Kevin's like, right. it reminds me of like. Uh, Jane and Silent Bob strike back. <laughs> like where <laughs> they like I guess this was like I, that was like two thousand one or some like early two thousands and you know, before the internet was popping like that and they printed up like all these like screen names and at the end of the movie they start knocking on everyone's door. <laughs> he's like, Is this uh pussy fuck one oh three? And he's like, Yeah, and then they just beat the shit out of him. <laughs> it's, like, it's like they go to everyone's fucking house. I, I think one of the other reasons with drum and bass is because first off, it's I, I actually had this there was this um, artist who's very big, but they're, most of them are from Europe. Mm -hmm. His name was, I believe, Switch Technique. Okay. And um, he told me, I asked him if he would check out my music a few years ago, and he said, no, you suck. I said, did you listen to it? He said, no, any American drum and bass sucks. So there's that stigma. Yeah. It's, it's not that popular. Right. And I'm doing something very different. I'm, I'm blending extreme metal with drum and bass. Not that nobody else is doing it, right. but they're not doing it the way that I'm doing it. A lot of times I'll add vocals on it too. So I also think that, now if you listen to drum and bass, you can't tell a Diesel Boy song from a Gein song, from a Zardonic song. It all, they're all taking the same samples and regurgitating each other's, regurgitating each other's shit. Yeah. Then this fucking big mouth Trump supporter from New York comes along and he's doing something and I am I'm doing something different a different sound and it probably bugs them it right. probably bugs them um, they're not smart enough to know they're, they're, they're very happy playing to their 10,000 fans that like that kind of music around the world okay. whereas I'm trying to expose metal fans to that type of music um, because I think it's very similar, like we talked about earlier, like yeah. Public Enemy is very similar to metal. Right. And I want to so, get you every bit of it. What's the that? mic. I just want to get you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, so Public Enemy. Uh, yeah, Public Enemy. You know, they 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 like metal. So I'm trying to I'm trying to expand to get bigger. And these guys just want to play to the same few people that they play to and 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 trade it actually sounds like they're trading songs with each other and just exchanging the artist's name right you know what i mean it's there's no real anything to it how did you get into drum and bass like how does that i made it i made a song i well the drum and bass is actually started from a sample um from i think a band called the winston brothers um it's called the amen break it's a break you've heard a million yeah, times yeah. And they speeded it up. They sped it up to 175 beats per minute. And that's how drum and bass started. I don't know which DJ did it, but it started in, in the 90s. It's all bass. And you, the drum and... The Amen Break, it's called, because that was the name of the song, I think, um, that is in almost every single drum and bass song. I think I know exactly you what know, it is. You know, it was in, in Earthling <laughs> Massive songs, too. Right, exactly. Yeah, because yeah, you were doing that electronic yeah. stuff, too. That was around the time of Atari Teenage Riot, yep. which yes. was one of those bands yes. that tried to 
you know, mix all those things together. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's what I was doing. I, so f- when I first started Stereo Assassin, if you look back, I was doing like some like really dumbass dance music. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't me. I was trying to find myself. Yeah. And um, so I did this song called Divinity Roach. And um, it was at 175 beats per minute, just so happens. And somebody said, this is insane drum and bass. And I'm like, what's that? <laughs> and then I did research. I'm like, oh, That's yeah, awesome. I really kind of dig this music. Let me, I, I dug the idea of it. But at some point, it got stale because nobody was really expanding anything. Yeah. So I said, let me put what I, you know, George, you'll remember, I, I did Harmony Corruption. I don't even remember back in the day. I was I was doing right. something like this back in like 1991 with one little sampler in my bedroom. So I started doing the drum and bass, and I started getting into the dubstep and adding metal with that, and um, started taking off. And basically, basically that's how I started doing drum and bass. I, I like I like what it is, but I think there's there's two cats out now. One guy's called Hallucinator, and mm-hmm. the other guy's called The Satan, and they're really they're doing what I'm doing. They're really expanding the right. sound. You know what I mean? They're I mean they're doing some wild shit that I'm like trying to figure out how are they doing this stuff. They're making it very metal, but for the most part, most of these drum and bass artists they just a very small tight group that just don't really care and they just play for themselves what I was listening to was what was that breakdowns beat no beatdowns uh, break, that was my first I was like seven years ago breakups beatdowns and so, breakbeats uh, breakbeats yeah. breakups and beatdowns That's something like that yeah <laughs> it's like hold on I have notes so <laughs> what, what, what I realized about that was like I felt like it was probably a little bit more hip hop like like the beats were, were maybe like yeah I was like I said I was finding myself I, I didn't have I'm, oh so that was the record you were talking about that you were finding yourself well that was the first full length but okay. I was still looking for myself there but that was the first one where I was kind of going towards getting to the point where I am now I wasn't doing dance because it wasn't until like there heavy, was a lot of hip hop like, on think, it I think heavy was where you I f- maybe found yourself right. Heavy is where I found myself, but I hate the production. I'm going to reproduce it because I I, I did it at a friend's house because I lost my house in Sandy. And so, but I felt the need to record and I wasn't in the proper environment, so I don't like the production quality of it. But yes, that's where I started. And actually, Divinity Roach is on that album. So that's where I found myself. The first album, Breakups, Beatdowns, and whatever, um... <laughs> Had a very big hip hip hop has always been a big influence on me. I played in mm-hmm. Soul Stick. You remember yeah. Soul Stick, and um, it's called new metal now. But in the nineties, it was we were playing in hard, the hardcore scenes. I remember and, booking Soul Stick, and you got into a fight with the sound man. Do you remember that, Stony Brook? Yes, I do. <laughs> because we got him here. He's coming in right now. Hold he on. started. He he came off like some asshole about some the chairs or something like that. Yeah, I, you were there. That's right. I booked you, dude. <laughs> Did you? I put you on the on the show because I remember the laugh you're doing right now is the same laugh that you came up to me like, "Oh, dude, I'm, I'm sorry, you're gonna kill me." Like I got into a fight with. I remember the guy's name. I don't want to say his name. He's a good dude, but you got into, and but I wasn't around. I was like outside. I came back in, and you're like, oh, "I'm sorry," you know, like, and I'm like, "We didn't get a fish fine. fight." We no, no, it was did. a verbal thing. Yeah, like yeah, you yeah. were on stage, he was like at the booth, and you guys just had words. Yeah, he, he had, he had. Listen, I'm a nice guy, and if but talk- like it's just. It's just classic, Kevin. You were yeah, just yeah. like he had that same smile and laugh. Like you know, I, I got into. I figured you, you know, you're gonna kill me and like start laughing. Well, you want, <laughs> if fun, speaking Kevin. of, <laughs> here's a story you're gonna love. <laughs> I played bass with Disciplinary Action. You yeah. know that, right? Yep. They, they came who had some kind of roots with white pride and stuff like that. But guys, you know, yeah. they go through their phases. It doesn't mean they're racist. They were just kids finding themselves at the time. Right. And then they asked me to join the band. And so I, I replaced Dean Condoleo, who's a good friend. Right. They said to me, uh, you have three days. We're playing at the Bond Street Cafe with Neglect. You have three days to learn 13 songs. And I knew nothing about hardcore music. Right. I was into hip hop and death metal. Mm-hmm. And But my first experience with hardcore was I, was I was in prison for a year. And I got out and Jeff Lanzetta from DA yeah. picks me up with Evan from Biohazard. Okay. And I didn't, Biohazard's album had just came out, the first one. Right. 
And I, uh, he's like, we're at the bar. He's like, Jeff tells me you rap. I'm like, yeah. He goes, yeah, I rap too a little. He goes, my album's going to be big. I'm looking, I'm like, oh, yeah, whatever. Just get me another beer, you know? Yeah. I had no clue, you know, what, what was going to And look at him now, a porn come star. Come up with that. Right, right. So then Jeff asks me to, you might have been at this show. I've never been to a hardcore show. Jeff says we're, we're playing with the elite. Do you remember the yeah, elite? Yeah, of course. Yep. With Mikey Dietz? Mm-hmm. So, and, and I think maybe Berserkers and probably Neglect, they played every yeah. show. So it was some little bar in Belmore. And I'm watching, and it's my first day out of jail. And I know nothing. I've never been to a hardcore show. And the guy, and I'm, I'm bombed because it's my first day out of jail. And the guy keeps turning the power off because the kids are moshing during right. the elite. Okay. And then he would like take the microphone and be like, I don't want that shit going on here. And he did it three times. So the guy, the kids are all booing and everything. And I'm just, I'm getting drunk. And I'm, so the third or fourth time he does it, he says, all right, he turns all the power off. He says, it's, it's over, no more. And I just happen to be, he's in a circle of everybody. And I just happen to be standing there, and he, and he just happens to look at me. He's looking at me while he's berating everybody on the microphone. He's just berating everybody. And he's pointing his finger, and it's in my face. And I said to him, and this is in front of 100 people. Uh, Ray, Archie was there. Yeah. You know, everybody, SIB. And I says, if you point that finger in my face one more time, I'm going to bite it off. And he pointed his finger in my face, and I bit the tip of his finger off. <laughs> ask, ask Glanzetta, call him right now. <laughs> and I took it out of my mouth, and I held oh it up. And God. I said, you see what happens when you fuck with me. <laughs> and I threw his finger down on the floor. He screamed. Just the tip of it came off, the right. nail. The, and... uh I went outside, I'm like, oh, every one of these fucking hardcore kids are going to hate me. Right. I mean, that's not how I'm supposed to act. And then one by one, all the SIB boys came out. Yeah, like, really You're like fucking it. awesome, bro. <laughs> that was great. That's the best thing I ever saw. And then they asked me to play in DA after that. Right. That was like your <laughs> initiation. Yeah, but I really thought I had screwed up. But apparently hardcore kids like to watch fingers yeah, you get know- bitten off. When I first started to hear drum and bass, I was never like super into the scene, but I went to plenty of raves and even one of the bands I was in, we dabbled in yeah. drum and bass. Earthling and, um, Massive. Yeah. Yeah. And hearing that, like the hecticness, hecticness of drum and bass and that energy gave me like butterflies, yeah. like hardcore did. And even some of the raves were, they were just more rebellious. They were illegal. They were like, you know, everybody wasn't like, oh my God, that guy's smoking a cigarette. You know, like, yeah. they, hardcore. It was it's, lawless. Yeah. It was. Hardcore is like, you know, when I first got into it, it was lawless. It was dangerous. And, you know, you get into it, you get into the culture, you change because the culture, and then you become like nicer, and that's fine. Unity. Cool. But... That's not originally why I got into it. And then when you, I went into raves and I was like, wow, this is actually dangerous. Like people are like, you know, doing crazy things. It was attractive. Yeah. And the music was faster and more raw. Yeah. And, and that was attractive too. Sure. That's what underground cultures are. Sure. I don't think that the, I, I honestly, I was, I was, I was doing a lot of drugs back then, and I wasn't going to raves. I was going to hardcore shows. Right. You know, all the shows you went to, pro- shows you played. Right. I mean, Earthling Massive was, I, I saw it the last time I saw you. might have been the last time you played. Um, when I saw you, I, I, I said, this is kind of, you were like the cur- uh, a seed of Stereo Assassin because the electronic stuff you were doing. I was like, this is what I want to do. But I remember, and I told you this, how, um, Stereo Assassin has never played live, but we're, we're about to fix that. Because I remember you telling me, logistically, it was very difficult with the yeah, electronics and stuff. So that It'll always, be easier the, these days now. Just it head. probably is easier. Yeah. My friend, um, I told you, Joe Letts, he's the drummer of Combi Christ, a huge industrial band. And he told me, Kevin, he goes, we just play and we have a guy in the back who has a background tape he just plays the you know the ambience uh the atmospheres on on a tape and we just plays a regular band to it it's not that hard so you intimidated me out of ever playing and joe kind of convinced me now that it's it's easier than i thought <laughs> so i'm gonna get a bunch of people being like oh great you intimidate him that's awesome george and then a bunch of people being like you were the seed for stereo assassin you nazi fuck. <laughs> 
That Twitter's blowing up right I, now. I really did though when I saw what you're doing third thing last year. I wish I remember where it was. I was like, this is this is it. This is what I'm looking to do. This is what harmony corruption was. Um even if you listen yeah. to Soul Sick, we we would we would doing hip hop but there was some elements of drum and bass in there and purposely put in there right and um, had like the new metal vibe it was definitely new yeah. metal that that was that was funny i was in prison again <laughs> <laughs> and then they sent me to a halfway house and i got on leave uh, <laughs> and they gave me a pass and i went to do you remember paulie from iron lung I remember the band Iron Law. All right. Well, yeah. he was a tattoo artist and a bassist. Okay. And I went to his house. And I said, tattoo soul sick on my back. So he's like, well, after he's halfway through, he says, what, you know, are you guys playing shows? I said, it's not even a band yet. <laughs> he said, are you sure you want me to do this? I'm like, don't worry. It's going to take nice off. nice of him at least, you know, <laughs> yeah. to ask you. So, yeah, right, right. <laughs> after you started it. <laughs> so, um... I was determined to make a band, and and I and I found a bunch of. I was like thirty years old, thirty two, and I found a bunch of high school kids, and um, I was like, "Let's do a band." Mm. And um, I sent the, a tape to. Um, I don't know if you knew the Creedies, seven one eight, um, seven one eight bookings. They were the biggest. They booked everybody. VOD, Candiria, Pete Steele, Typo yeah. Negative, everybody. And uh, they called me back, and I thought it was a prank, and I cursed them out and hung up on them. <laughs> so then I was telling somebody the story, this girl Erica, and she's like, no, 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 you need to call them back. That was for real. So I called back, and, and I enjoyed a really good relationship with it was Maria and Ken. They were married. I had a very nice relationship with Maria. She became a close friend. Mm -hmm. And they put us on tour with... Everybody, Meshuggah, um, Incubus, we were playing shows with VOD. Well, we would have got those anyway because yeah, we were friends with them. But it was fantastic. We had a great time. And How long was the band around? Uh, we started in 96 and we broke up. That was the last show we did, not even with the f real band mm -hmm. at Stony Brook that you put together. With, it was probably 99. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah 99. Yeah. So we were, and we... Re right when that genre hit really 99 I yeah think. yeah it was it wasn't called new metal back then no. it was just metal yeah. and uh we had well eight... new metal was like corn and limp biscuit right so that's 90 no but like i think limp biscuit didn't really hit until no. like 99 right limp biscuit didn't come out and start hitting until 97 98 99 the deftones corn, like already left corn like, was was a huge influence yeah i remember i was listening to corn with timmy him from VOD yeah. at his house and and I, I, the hair stood up on the first album when it too, dropped. Yeah. The first record like like was a big deal. Yes, anyway. yeah. It was like amazing. you heard Blind, it was different. Like they had the seven string guitars. Yeah, uh, the way they played the bass, so it was definitely. And I know Tim felt the same way too because we both had that look on our face. And then um, so we did Soul Sick and and we released an album. Um, it's available on iTunes, Soul Sick. It's called um, Performing Exact Revenge. It's got guest appearances from Candiria, yeah. who's like one of my favorite bands of all time. Ken Shulk, their drummer, he moved out to L.A. He's worked with Fuel. I, I'm not, I can't be sure about this, but I think he's worked with Taylor Swift, too. He does a lot of studio work. He's always been a very huge supporter of mine. No matter what goes on on Facebook, he's always been a good friend. And he's never got involved. Yeah. But he's always been supportive of me, uh, supportive of me. And he's actually, we've been working very hard to put something together with him appearing with Stereo Assassin. Mm -hmm. Last year, two years ago, Ken called me from Candiria, and he says, listen, call this number. This is going to change your life. And I talked to this guy. I don't want to say what his name was, but he offered me this huge record contract with a $100,000 up front, mm -hmm. cash advance. I saw $5,000 of it. Right. Then the Mexican mafia stole the money. Mexican mafia? Yeah, these are the stories Miami. he's telling me. As I'm breaking my ass over the year, working to put this music together, and he's telling me to get, I'm reaching out to uh, Sal Lacoco from Sworn Enemy. To I'm get, hashtagging all of this. Hashtag to, yeah, Mexican yeah. mafia. Hashtag, hashtag, right? Mexican yeah. mafia. Hashtag the black That's hand. The, 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 Mexican mafia, the Mexican mafia took the money from two shady, shady lawyers that were holding the money, and it was lie after lie after lie. And meanwhile, he's got me reaching out to, um like, Big names, um, um, 
the bassist from Fear Factory. I asked him to guest appear. He was going to guest appear. I had all these people. And then the guy, he was just full of shit. It turned out to be a big lie. It wasn't Ken's fault. I think Ken got played too. Yeah. And it never happened. And it's funny. The guy actually called me uh, a couple months ago. He says, listen, he goes, you want to give me back that five grand? What? And I was like, you're not getting that money back, pal. He yeah. says, well, you know, we had an arrangement. I said, fun. exactly. We had yeah. an arrangement and it didn't work out. And I hung up on him. He never called me back. Unbelievable. That is crazy. Imagine but, that. He's got the five grand. It, it was horrible. But just, yeah, listen to this. I told him I needed my uh, headphones, right? So they sent me headphones from like 1998. They got duct tape wrapped all over them. They sent them from L.A. Instead of sending me $200 pair, <laughs> they want me to make an album, right? Instead of buying me nice headphones, it's got duct tape. You can tell it's been used like it's a thousand times. Yeah, and straight, it didn't. Straight and off it didn't, his Walkman. <laughs> and it didn't work. And I called him. I said, "This thing don't work." He's like, "That's funny. It worked when I mailed it." I'm like, "Dude, it's got duct, duct tape, tape on it." <laughs> but George, you know yourself. You know how many times of, as a musician, yeah, you promised All of shit. Us, definitely. All right. That's the way. The I got emails is, from the Philippines. You know? yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 full of like people who uh, they call them. There's a book I read, and they call them shadow artists. The people who are not the artist, but they want to be the artist. Yeah. So they're close. They're the, you know sometimes the agent, the booking. They're like around it, and they they feel like they got to talk a bigger game to get you involved. And because you're gonna be like, if they say enough, you'll be like, oh okay, <laughs> that was the number. Yeah, and then. They don't have it, and and you know there's a lot of that. There's and the other and the other part of that, George, is as musicians, we want it to be real. That's our dream. Yeah. So we want to believe it. Right. So it's easy for us to be duped. Right. And even Bobby Gustafson, you know, um, I hadn't heard from Tim, um, from MOD in a while about the compilation Metal on Metal. So I reached out to Bobby, and this is a few weeks ago, and I said, Bobby, have you heard from Tim? And um, he said, yeah, he's been sick. The compilation's still happening. I says, I just wanted to, you know, because shit happens. He goes, I know, Kevin, it's not like I've ever been lied to. Bef- I've yeah. never been lied to before. That- so it even happens to him. And uh, he actually plays on one of my songs that isn't released, that will be released on Cataclysm that we talked about that I signed with. Um, dude, he shredded so hard on this song. It's unbelievable. But the thing is, he's old school. So all he, he, he didn't have computers or an interface. He just recorded it from an amp. So there's all like, you can hear dogs barking in the background and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it took a lot of like engineering to get that sound out and just get the guitar. Yeah. It was real pain in the ass. Yeah. That is pretty old school. <laughs> and, and, and I asked him, I said, you know, Bobby, I can't, we became friends on Facebook. He, he likes... He's got dark humor. He likes my jokes. And um, I said, Bobby, I can't pay us. He said, just get me a fat chick when I come to New York. <laughs> <laughs> that, that we can do. <laughs> I, yeah, I can help you out yeah. with that. <laughs> but I think he has a girlfriend now. So no, he never said that. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you too about Impractical Jokers. Yeah. Number one. And then number two, it seemed to be some t- you're trying to parlay it maybe into like getting your own show, getting some type of acting, getting yeah. something other than music. But it started with Impractical Jokers, right? All right. So uh, Impactical, Impractical Jokers, first you got to know that's it's like a candy camera show. Yeah. It wasn't like, yeah. I wasn't hired. It was just, you know, that was me. That was, people asked, did you know that was happening? I had no clue. I just thought it was some wacky guy in the city and stuff like that. And by the way, you should have saw the stuff they didn't include. There should be a B reel. Uh, if it would be, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> some of the some of the things I said, um, but uh, that is their most popular. Um, and I'm going to sound a little arrogant here, but it's true. That's their highest rated show, and it's because of me and my personality. Because mm-hmm. I, I kind of tore the guy apart, and they had a lot of fun with it. And people are like, why didn't you kick his ass? Well, first off, the guy's literally like four foot six, mm-hmm. and he posed no threat to me. And and I just had more fun abusing him, you know, verbally. Right. It was almost like he was asking, for, which he was. I didn't know it was a TV show. Um, we d- we didn't actually didn't see the episode. So yeah. What what was the the the, the thing? I, they I, only had the trailers that I can see. I couldn't see the whole. Oh, if you yeah. go to YouTube 
and you t- punch in Impractical Joker's security guard throwdown. Okay. That'll come up. Um, so it was in um, a drugstore on 28th and 9th, I believe. Yeah. And I would go in there because I was working across the street and I would buy scratch offs. And I walked in. They didn't show this, but he, he screamed like a girl, ma. He screamed like a, like a real girl and he jumped up on the counter and everybody looked. He's like, I thought I saw a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just kind of he started picking on some old lady in a wheelchair so that's when it, it picked up I said he said um, I got my fanny pack on and I turned around and said who the fuck wears a fanny pack and then it just because what what it is is like I guess the other three guys they have like a headset yeah. right an earpiece yeah and they're giving them lines to tell because yeah. that's the show right Basically, my right. girlfriend watches it, so um, so yeah, I guess they were feeding him all these lines. So. Right, and they were telling him stuff to do, and I was like, you know, I, like at one point he was standing behind me, and um, he was doing something, and I turned around and said, what are you, sniffing my ass? <laughs> 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 and then uh, I called him a douchebag, and he's like, my, my friends call me a douchebag. I, I was like, I, I can see why. He goes, but what is a douchebag? So I said, come here, I'll show you. And I brought him over to a mirror. <laughs> I said, there, that's a douchebag. <laughs> so, but a funny thing about that is, it was not funny, and I don't want to sound like an asshole, but when it first came out, yeah, <laughs> too late. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, when it first came out, I was like, this is cool. Yeah. But like, I get, rec- it's on in re- reruns three times a month, two or three times a month. Okay. It's on like their best of DVDs and everything. And um, it's got almost three million hits on YouTube. Wow. And their next closest one has like a million hits. Right. So I no longer think that, and, and I can't go a week without somebody anywhere saying, you are that guy from Impractical Joke is kind of shake kidding. your hand. Mm. My favorite episode. So I want a piece of the action. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like that show is popular. That episode is what it is because of my character, because I'm a character. Right. And I want to get paid. So I, I hired a law firm mm-hmm. who is going to take a look at it. And I mean, I signed a contract and everything, but it, it's funny how they break. It's, I thought you were joking. No, but you're. <laughs> I'm being serious. I want. I if you've made millions, literally millions of dollars off of me, give me something. That I'm. I'm being totally serious. I'm, no, I believe so, you. <laughs> now I do. You know, I didn't know I was on TV. It was just like almost like there was a loud bang, and then all these people rushed out. These stage hands, and somebody's like, "You're on TV. This is great. There's cameras up there. Sign this. Sign this. Sign this. Oh, don't worry. We'll, we'll explain it to you later." And and I feel like that was under duress. I really didn't understand what was you were being kind of really bullied. That's a fair point if you think about it. Yeah. Because you don't, you know, you're like, okay, fine, but. It's not, you didn't uh, set up a meeting to no, talk was, about this show. And it was very so. confusing. There was so much confusing and you're caught off guard. And so, I, I, you know, I want, I, want, I want a piece of the action. You made a lot of money off of me and, and I feel like I deserve a piece of, a piece of it myself. I, I'm feel, not a, I feel like I'm getting the King of New York card table uh, talk here. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher Walken. I want a piece of the yeah. action. Nickel bag gonna be like, sold in the park. <laughs> I want what, in. Kevin, we got an idea for a show. Sure. <laughs> You're the star, right? That's, well, I am, tr- I am trying to, uh, I have tried to um, parlay. They actually quite well, I saw it. the petitions. Yeah, and then they had a <laughs> the petition my, my, to get you on, and, and the petition to get you off. To get the petition to get me off, I had taken down. Okay, and um, the petition to get me on, um, it isn't going to go nowhere. It takes a lot of work to get that right. stuff done, so I, I stopped pushing it. <laughs> yeah, I would like something to come of it, but I'm more of a musician, and I got this contract now, so I'm going to yeah. see where that goes. And uh, but it was fun doing it, and it's going to be more fun if we can figure out a way to, you know, listen. I'm not looking for a lot. Give me twenty grand. You made you made so much money off me. Give me right. twenty grand. What would my... you do with the twenty grand? Enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Pay some bills. You know what I mean. Yeah. I thought you were gonna buy like a drum machine or some shit. No. Oh yeah, I'd absolutely buy some gear. <laughs> Go into music. I'm yeah, sure. <laughs> absolutely. I would. Um, you know, I. I um, do you constantly buy new equipment? Because like. Technology now is like everything software, and I'm, I, I do constantly buy. I use Reason mm-hmm. um, for my DAW. 
Um, and Reason just finally, they've said for years they will never go third party. And in April, they like blew, literally shattered the um, software music scene when they announced that they are going to accept third, wear, um, third party software, which means you can use like um, uh, Massive and stuff like that. These are all very big software programs that you couldn't use with Reason. And they said they would never do that. And it really, and it came out in May, and it's like changed the landscape of music because Reason will now accept any kind of software with theirs integrated flawlessly. And I remember Ken Shark from Candiria mm -hmm. talking to me about him, being like, this is like the most amazing thing. People were like posting all over the internet. Like, can you believe it was like a huge thing? And it's a big help. So, yeah, I'd buy a lot of software. Why, why was the last record so mellow? Which one? What, Phantasma? Or? Oh, Phantasma. That was um, something I was sitting on for a few years. And I, it was more... Um, Listen, I do what I, I feel like doing. Yeah. I, I don't have a band to answer to. And I wanted to do something more of like an ambient... It was very like, ambient. Soundtrack, Halloween soundtrack kind oh, of thing. I love it. My favorite movie. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 exactly. John Carpenter. Like, yeah, just like a spooky movie like that. That's and, exactly what it was. And, and actually, I got a phone call out of it from... There was a band from Connecticut that used to play around with us in the 90s, okay. Muchmouth. And um, they are... The guitarist is making movies now, and because he heard that, he called me and said, I'm making a movie. Would you like to do the music for it? You know what? It does really seem like it could be like a score of a movie. That's exactly Compa what my intention compared was. Compared to like uh, Alpha Male. Alpha Male. Mm -hmm. Which was like four, five, no, four years ago. So there was like a four-year break. Um, it was probably written... I think Phantasm was written before it, though. Oh, really? Yeah. And I just never got... I have so much stuff. I'm, I'm the type of artist where I'm like, yes, this is amazing. And then, no, this is amazing. And I forget about that. And it sits there for three years. I think years. that's everyone. Me. Yeah, that's all of yeah. us, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm, Not me. I'm writing songs. Oh, no? Because <laughs> I don't play. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm writing songs that, like, you know, I'm it's sorry. like... Man, it's like I don't even finish one. I'm like, yeah, but this song right here. <laughs> yes, exactly. So it sat on the shelf, and I thought it was time to release it. And um, I, I think when I released it, I released it as um, in the category of like um, holiday music, like for Halloween. So oh, yeah, that makes sense. I'll tell you. Um, was that Farrington Road? That's that's yeah, the one that I like the most. Yeah, that that's thank you. That's actually the street I grew up on in Oceanside. That that was actually haunted and that music i tried to convey what i felt through that house being haunted every every song i had an experience with and i tried to convey without words just through the music in a like haunting scary way yeah and, but, and how close are you to doing this live because that's where that's your roots is playing that, live music that kind of stuff you'll never hear live okay. um but no i mean stereo assassin stereo assassin yeah. in general okay so um i have a couple of projects going one is called antichrist which was supposed to come out what's today the 24th yes tomorrow which it's not happening um i'm gonna give it to cataclysm to see if they want to release it if not i'll release it on my own label born wrong records when i finish mixing it in a week or two um extreme i guess you would call it extreme in um industrial hardcore but not the hardcore we know right. hardcore dance music yeah, edm yeah. yeah and um so i have that going then i have another project um an album called inhuman aggression which i put together a band for because i want to start playing live but i don't want to be one of these bullshit djs that you see on youtube did you ever look at like uh, drum and bass DJs on YouTube they, they're so awkward because they're not <laughs> real fucking musicians and it's just their awkwardness is so apparent and they're once in a while twitching a button and it's like you don't hear any difference yeah I was like what are they doing yeah it's, and it's, it's I, not even plugged in right you, there's videos <laughs> pointing know. that yeah. out too <laughs> and um, so I didn't want to do that so I put together a band this cat uh, Jamie Baldassano he used to play in Hostile Intent he plays in a Slayer cover band every time you mention a guy's name he's Italian so it sounds like the mob <laughs> yeah. you know Joey Baldassano <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
from around the block. Yeah. You know, the guy I was telling well, you about. It's on Farrington Road. <laughs> well, and then the, on next one, Road. the next one was Billy Gallo. <laughs> He's playing See? bass. Yeah, his cousin Joey Gallo. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Vinny Boombox. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then I got an Irish kid uh, playing guitar. Real good, not real nice kid. Real good, too. Ryan McAuley. And um, it's going to be for Inhuman Aggression. But Inhuman Aggression is complete... I took out all the industrial stuff. It's just real, extremely heavy metal core. Like really, it's it's really heavy. It's it's kind of like I would say, um, like, um, um, what's that band? Uh, I wrestled the bear once. You ever hear them? No. Fucking insane. You I feel like I it must. Out. You gotta. It's a girl singer, and she just growls better than anybody in the world. And it's like I wrestled the bear once meets, and it's all one word. It's no separation. I wrestled the bear once, one word. Fantastic band. And it's like them meeting, um, um, what was Phil and Samo's, uh, not Pantera. Down? Not down, a super joint ritual. Super joint, okay. Yeah, it's kind of like that, just real heavy. And we're going to take that live. And at some point, I'm going to integrate um, the electronic stuff like you did with Earthing Le- Massive, George. And so the th- and then the third project that will probably be the first release that mo- Cataclysm is most interested in is a dubstep project. Dubstep metal with um, a rapper. Not me rapping. I okay. used to do that in Soul Sick. Where actually, um, they know, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Necro. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're, tr- they're friends with him and they're going to approach him. We were just talking about his brother's group, Heavy Metal Kings, Ill mm-hmm. Bill. Yeah, they were. Yeah, Ill Bill. 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 Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Were, they were talking about it. So, so actually, um, they're friends with him and they're going to see um, if uh, he'd be willing to work with me. And they're also. They're, they're signing a bunch of people, and they just signed this kid the same day they signed me called Disaster Piece. I only met him briefly for two minutes at the hotel, but uh, he was tatted up white kid with the uh, pulled down earrings, you know, the big holes and everything, but he's apparently an insane rapper. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to get somebody to, to spit on it. So it's going to be like industrial dubstep with metal with with like hardcore rap over it should mm-hmm. be really interesting that's crazy i uh, mean that's that's definitely i'm like, exhausted yeah <laughs> just hearing that description like, i'm tired it's like a buffet table <laughs> it of, is of genres it, that i i do i kind of you're right george i see a problem with my music on how to market it mm-hmm. for cataclysm how are they going to market it are they going to market to edm fans are they going to market to metal fans I don't know. I I mean I I could never figure out any of that, but I know some of the best bands. You know, we we talked about Corn in the break. You know, we talked to you know you think of Jane's Addiction bands that are just doing their own thing and they they create their own genre. I mean, it's not fun for the uh, the people who are marketing it, but that's yeah. why you go to a label. Yeah, that, well, that's yeah, what, that's their job. I guess that's, that's their department. I mean, you're a one man marketing thing and you have your own label. So I'm sure you have more of an interest in that and you're, you're blending a lot of stuff, but I think we, a lot of people think they're, you know, people just like one category, but we grew up in an area of New York and New York, especially where like, we just liked everything. I mean, you liked hip hop. It wasn't weird. Like you were talking about, um, seeing Slayer and Public Enemy when yeah. we were in the break. Clash and the Titans. That's not yep. weird to us, but no. so o- over the whole country, over the whole world, it's not weird for people. Listen, I'd, I'd, I'd play with, with Soul Sick. We'd play, uh, I played with, we did a show uh, with uh, Soul Sick with Candiria, Hatebreed, maybe Meshuggah, some other big band, Sick of It All, somebody, Madball, and then I went home and I'd listen to um, Porter's Head Dummy. Right. Oh, you know Jesus what I mean? Christ. <laughs> that, that, is, that album changed my life. Two albums that changed my life, Paul's Boutique and oh. Dummy. Yeah, the Dust Brothers, the, the oh, work on Paul's Boutique and Dummy. Like Jeff Barrow's, like his production is insane. The, one of the Dust Brothers a um, few years back, because um, what I did was find all these cats that that inspired me and I'd be like, you know, here's my music and one of the Dust Brothers liked it and I sent them a shirt and then 
he turned up in a magazine wearing a stereo assassin shirt and mm. then um I reached out to Tommy Victor from Prong. Yes. And he's like, this is pretty good stuff. I was like, you want a shirt? He's like, yeah. Never expect him to wear it. About a year later, my friend's like, dude, you got to look in fucking Cream Magazine or whatever magazine, Revolver. And I look on, look at it, and there's Tommy Victor wearing a stereo assassin shirt. So, And the new Prong's pretty good. So, Listen, nice. you gotta I, get your lawyers on that. Yeah, like, I want. <laughs> I want a piece of the action. Of the action. <laughs> yeah, how, how many copies does this magazine sell? All right. My lawyer's coming over. <laughs> Don't worry, Tom. You're good. <laughs> you know, it's a good name, a good logo. Yeah. I think you know. When we're younger, we're in bands. We think none of that really matters. It's about the music. But you get older, and you realize like this whole thing. The way it's, it's going to so look on a T-shirt, oh, the yeah. name, you know, it's the way so we win bought records. It's, it's right. like that, like just branding like that is is killer yeah. because it worked for for hip hop. Like like when I think of a group like La Coca Nostra, like that was another group that just had their logos that were amazing. So right. like, well, these these logos I did myself, and I they're they're okay. But now that I'm working with um, Cataclysm, they have a whole art team. So I'm gonna come up with some like, and I do all my my own album covers and everything. But now we're gonna take it to a level where we're gonna get something like real badass. Yeah. And it's funny you're talking about t-shirts, and I know you're aware of this. A big controversy started before because I have no problem. I will never say white power. Right. To me, that's that's a racist thing. It means you're you're superior over another race, and I don't believe in that. Um, I I do, however, believe in white pride. I also believe in black pride, right. brown pride. I believe you should be pr- proud of your color and your heritage. Right. And I have no problem with anybody saying I'm proud to be white or proud to be black. I f- in fact, I-, I think everybody should say it. And um, the answer to that, the liberals, is just be proud to be an individual. And my answer to that is go fuck yourself. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't right. you know. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, so... A black in today today's day and age, a black guy could say, "I'm black and I'm proud," and he'll get an applause. A white guy says, "Proud white man," and he's a racist. So I made shirts said "Stereo Assassin," 100% American white boy, uh, 100% white boy American metal. Right. And the furor that started on Facebook, the attacks that I got was the greatest thing that ever happened to me <laughs> because once the Patriots found out about it. Boom, I sold about 100 shirts in three weeks. Yeah. They were just flying off the shelves. And that's another thing. My haters do most of my promotions for me now. <laughs> but how, do, how do people not realize that? Like, remember the controversy back in the 80s and 90s with the PMRC? It was like oh, the they just proved you say fuck, you're going to sell more records. Yeah. All the Christian right. conservatives and all the Gore. crazy... Even, you know, the liberals that went crazy because they were like, oh, this is, you know, um, homophobic or whatever. Thanks, man. You just sold me a I, ton I of records. Tried. I don't know how people, all the way up to Facebook. Yeah. How do people know that that doesn't? Every time you open your mouth and call me a scumbag, a racist, pedophile, whatever you guys like to call me this week, you are actually helping me. It's It's the thing that keeps coming up in a lot of conversations I have with guys like you and and Sam is the whole idea of are these people really upset or are they virtue signaling? They just want to say I'm good by default because I'm pointing out how bad you are. And they don't want to have a conversation. They don't want you as an ally. They just want to be outraged for people. It's their job to be an outrage machine and they don't really if they could meet you and and they think that they could change your mind they wouldn't do it yeah because if they did they would ask questions and they would inquire and they'd be like what's this all about and once you tell them it's like oh, okay but the I'll point come- is to make themselves look good yeah right right and i and i think that's that's i think you hit the nail on the head i think that's the biggest part of it it's real easy to seem superior over facebook in the safety of your mother's house these <laughs> kids would never say half the things they say to um anybody in person because um go look at their profile pictures bro yeah i mean you, any of anybody would crush them like you know they're just like 
They're bitches. <laughs> I mean, I don't, can't put it any other way. They're like, they're sissies. They're, they're, and they get their, and, they, and they're not tough guys, and they would never survive in the real world, but they can make themselves strong and tough through the safety of the internet. And, right. And, 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 and try and, you know, act tough. And But even if, if they're going to act tough, even if people who don't act tough, and they act like they're smarter than you, and they're superior because they, you know, they're looking at what you do and they're saying you're a racist. They're being dismissive. You're 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 a Nazi, and they're throwing these things at you. I'm curious if they themselves are really truly concerned with racism, or they're just seeing you know what gets the most attention. The and attention I, is I, when I put up a paragraph about how you know bad this is and how racist this is, and that gets them attention and it's a white knight virtual signaling thing that that's that's what people do for attention these days not getting in a band not creating your own art not curating things not taking a risk in in and being a comedian not taking a risk in being an actor or an actress not taking a risk in hitting on a girl that's out of your league they don't take risks they sit behind a keyboard that's right call you out and then lean back and feel feel good about yourself good they get some of the attention that Artists like yourselves, you know, I've been working on for years, curating, figuring things out, risking. You know, that's all. That's all the artists we know. They've been they've been working on this. But the new thing is to is to get that same attention, get that endorphin rush by picking on words. And yeah, picking and, on things. And, 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 and you're absolutely right. But I'm also concerned with: Do they even understand the words that they're using? I, I really don't think they understand what socialism means, true socialism, or or even what a Nazi means. Because if 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 you really understood what a Nazi was, you wouldn't call you me wouldn't a Nazi. Yeah. You wouldn't use that word because there's never been any. If you, in fact, if you look at my Facebook page, all I ever do is say I'm, I stand with Israel. How can I be a Nazi? Right. I mean, so I don't really think. I think they just flavor words that are popular now, yeah. and I think that they're watering them down to where I used to be really offended. Now it's like it's almost like a badge of honor. Like this moron's calling me a racist. That means I'm doing something right. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah, let let them do, let them do the work for me. <laughs> Social media, the internet, and the human flaws all, you know, this this like <laughs> gumbo pot. It's all smashing together. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 um a curse and a blessing at the same time. Yeah. You gotta yeah. be able to use it right. Um I've learned I mean, I'm always learning, and I, I, I'm, you know, I still make mistakes, but I'm, I'm getting really good. I've gotten really good at how to use these morons mm-hmm. to, to, to work in my favor. Right. I mean, you, you to think that you're going to make a blog uh, uh, called Stereo. Listen, they found uh, I, I used when I was a young kid. I used to do modeling. I'm an old man now, right? But I did um, an S and M video shoot. Well, professional video shoot. It was no homosexuality, nothing. Which I find funny that these liberals who are, you know, calling me uh, homophobic, all of a sudden I'm a fucking fag. They, that's what they're calling me because they found these naked pictures of me. But there's no men in it. It's me and three women. Right. So first off, they're hypocrites. Second off, they're they're liars. So they started posting around the pictures. I've had almost all of them taken down. What I happened was I can't unsee that. Kevin. Yeah, I went. Did what, you? I saw a little bit. <laughs> so, so what? So what? Three what like MySpace. You had them up on MySpace way back. Oh, I, I had. Put, I put post. They were, I posted them myself. Yeah, that's so what, what that's happened how I was saw they 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 tried to hurt me by posting pictures. All I got was hot girls saying they wanted to fuck me. I, yeah. I swear to God, I'm not. I'm not lying to That's you. That's a win-win right there, dude. They, they, oh yeah, you're you're killing me. Stop posting those pictures, please. Stop. <laughs> Don't post those pictures no more. And yeah, that's awesome. So uh, you know you're gonna have your haters. The more successful I get, and and like I said, anytime um, it's a musician. Uh, it's always somebody with it's never a musician that's calling me out for fake fans and bullshit that has more fans than me. Right. It's always somebody who, in terms of likes, is less much less successful. Right. Which I find interesting. But um, if they took and half these, and then you get the guy. Like yesterday, I wrote, I did a little thing on on Stereo Assassins page about how um people are confused that term limits 
laws is a horrible thing. Right. I think it's a horrible thing. We already have term limits. It's called the power of voting. All right. Why would you give away that unique, very precious gift to vote somebody out of office because you're too lazy and hand that power to the government? It makes no sense to me. And some guy who I never saw before, his name was like Baba Ganesh Ganush, rich literally, and he looked like a, a definitely a Columbine school shooter. Was like Does he sound the Italian. Yeah, no, no, it was not Italian, and uh, and he said, "Shut the fuck up." I'm like, "Do I frighten you?" He said, "No, you." But he said, "You better be frightened of me." I looked. He lived in like Trinidad or something. I'm like, "Yeah, I'm real frightened, you fat fuck." Uh, you know, I love how. I mean, I, I've not seen your Facebook stuff, but I, I feel like you might engage everyone. <laughs> like completely. I don't think. I think it's almost like you know. I'm thinking of like Rick Grimes in The Walking Dead, like fighting zombies. <laughs> Zombies, and this and motherfucker human, yeah, yeah. is shooting everybody. everybody. It, it ends well. That particular <laughs> thing about term limits was more towards conservatives and people towards the right, right? Because it seems like they're more for term limits. And and no, Dick, you already got your term limit power. It's called the power to vote. Don't give away such a precious gift to the government. Don't right. let the government do the work for you. So you're saying it's a unique point. I don't think I've ever heard it that way. It, you're saying that a term limit, like a politician has a right to run and you have a right to vote. Leave That's, it at that. Everybody at has that. their rights. Right. Why do you want more government involved sticking their head in it? Whenever if someone is good enough to keep being reelected, let right. it be. The only person who should have term limit is the president. Okay. Because nobody should have ultimate power for um, theoretically forever. Right. But everybody else, if you're doing a good job, and if you're doing a shitty job, just vote them out. Mm -hmm. Don't give up that precious power to the government. Yeah, I just can't understand why people want to keep giving. I guess more it's to the government. Congress is supposed to like get in there, do something, go back to the the to the constituency like of where you live. That's the original intent of that. Well, but these people become career politicians. Well, that one of the cons a conservative wrote yeah. to me and he said, "Well, that's why we need term limits because of people like Maxine Waters. Yeah, John her, McCain, her constituents Maxine will Waters. always vote her in. Well, then, then they're always going to suffer. In, right, in, you're right. That's a good. Point. They'll always suffer, and yeah. until they realize what they can that they can vote her out." They'll always suffer. And they do under right. vaccine wars. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so that's my point. We we don't need the government dictating when people should get out of it. Less government's always better. Always right. better. There you go. There you go. So I think we've learned a lot here. We did. Uh, just just want to give a tip to, to guys that artists that are coming up because I wasn't afforded the same thing yes. when I write to D and B artists mm -hmm. or anything like I find metal artists to be much more any metal artists I've asked to guest appear or anything, even bigger ones, right. um, always said yes. Right. And uh, drum and bass artists either tell me I suck or I should die or I'm a <laughs> racist or just don't answer. Um, if you're if you're an artist and and in this day and age, social media is very important. You need to put your name on every kind of music page there is, mm -hmm. not just Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, anything you could think of. Pinterest, Tumblr. You need to get your name out there. And what you need to do is um, one thing I learned on your page, if your public page. Don't always talk. I used to always talk about my music. Okay. People do not want that's. Uh, I read, saw this thing, Cardinal Sid number one. People don't want to hear about your fucking music every second. Be different. I mean, okay. when I was just doing my music, I was getting maybe fifth, three or four likes a day. Right. You know what I mean? It tapers. And I, then when yeah. I started doing like the political stuff with it, now I'm getting 50, 60, I get 2,000, 3,000 views on my videos and stuff like that. Sometimes 100,000 views I've got hit with. And um, so, you know, be diverse. Don't just focus on your music. You know, be a regular person. Connect with your fans. Do free giveaways. Save up a couple hundred dollars. Get some free t-shirts. Everybody loves free stuff. Give free shirts to hot chicks. People will pay much more attention. Find hot chicks on Facebook. Be like, I'm in a band. Can I send you a free shirt? You know, if she doesn't think you're a crazy stalker, she'll accept. And then lawyer up and get a piece of the action. Yeah, get, get I mean, monetarily, I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if you're always just putting out your music, I wouldn't go. But I check your page because you put out 
more stuff. There's just more stuff to see. So I'll go check out what's going on over there because there's more than just stereo assassin, stereo assassin, stereo assassin. Right. There's other things going on. So sure. you just you go back, you click like, you play a video, you know. Right. And then even the the skirmishes I have. Right. People love to look it's at a, that I shit. I sit there, I'm that classic <laughs> with the popcorn. You yeah, know, yeah, that yeah. Shit goes on. Right, exactly. You know, on, on other pe- on plenty of people's pages. I mean yeah. we all rubberneck yes. at that stuff. We might complain about it, but entertainment's entertainment. You yeah, know, absolutely. I, and I have a lot of liberal friends, hardcore liberal yeah. friends. And if I know them in real life, like Jaw, well, that hurt, huh? Yeah, <laughs> so I felt it too. Jaw, you know, or me, his, or me, you, your new friend. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, and Jaw, J- Jeremy Johnson you know, from Berserkers. I love him to death. I've known him forever. He's a fantastic guy. Love but him. But like, I just hate his his poli- his political views, and um, we argue. But we'll, I'll right. never let it get to the point because I love him as I think of him as a brother. We grew up in a scene together, right? And so I'll never let it get to the point where we will never talk again, right? Right. I that's... mean, that's what happened with him and Lanzetto. They delete each other now. They don't talk. Okay. Jeff's like, I love him. I just can't be friends with him on Facebook, right? Well, I mean, you guys have been friends twenty five years. If you're going to let that interfere. That I won't let happen. I can't imagine that every guy I was in the parking lot of a hardcore show with, I agreed with politically. We would talk, we talk shit, and then we moved on. I don't want to. I don't want to have enemies over this. A lot of people, especially you know, as time goes on in this political climate, they're not friends because this one voted for Hillary, this one voted for Trump, and it just doesn't. It just doesn't move me. Sometimes I'm like, that guy should lay off. Yeah. But that's just a thought. You can unfollow. I, I, but I think I, everybody should lay off, including me. I just find it very difficult. So I'm, in, I'm imagining other people find it very difficult not to put their opinion on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I usually, can't be the only one. I usually try to focus like with people that I don't agree with certain things. I just focus on things that we do agree on. And, and, and it's safer. And it's friendlier, and people look at you better. But at the same time, for me, with Stereo Assassin, it's, it's, that's not a good business idea. Right. <laughs> and, it's, and the thing is, too, we'll all say it, but it is Facebook. That's what it's there for, to yeah. be opinionated. People go in. We're, we walk right into the lion's den. Um, but the reality is, like, I, I'm thinking more when I say that, like, you know, family members or, or, or friends that you've known forever. I don't want to end friendships because we, we can't figure this out you know, in paragraphs to each other where other people are jumping in. A lot of times I've had conversations where me and my friend, we go offline and then we want to just agreeing on everything. You know what yeah, I mean? And it's uh, yeah, fine. And uh, yeah. I, uh, People that, you know, new people you meet and you get into arguments. Yeah, it's new like, who people, cares? Yeah, who cares? But old friends, I can't see losing I can't over who the fuck you that. voted for. I, 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 have a, um, I have family that's um, half black, cousins. And one of my cousins is, um, who is half black, uh, Mike Puma, what's up? Michael Robert Puma, <laughs> he's um, he's completely liberal, and we're from two, he's a young millennial kid, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm an old man, you know what I mean? And we have two different points of views, and he's convinced I'm a racist, even yeah. though he's my cousin, yeah. and you know we've spent my real blood, flesh and blood, and um, so he says to me on Facebook, he says, you know, he's like, I, you know, I know, you know, I'm half black, but we're blood. But you're a racist, Kevin, and there's no denying that. But I know, cousin, that if I had a fight, you'd have my back. So I replied, well, I'd only have half of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to guess which half. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> People will take that yeah. and repost it and, and, and fashion it in a way oh, that I'm like, like I was telling you the story. I, I was telling George on the break. We had, um, there's this girl, a, a black girl that goes, works at the gas station where I get my coffee and stuff. And she's a lovely girl and we have a nice friendship and we're very friendly. We actually have each other's phone numbers and text each other and stuff. And she, I like her. She's very nice. And, um. I went in one day and I did a little parody and I had my phone on and I asked for a pack of cigarettes and um, she told me, what is it, uh, 1058? He says, well, how much for my white privilege do I get off? And she was like, what? She was, I was like, well, I don't have my card with me, but I was like, I, obviously I'm white, so I should get a discount, white privilege, right? right? And she was not upset at that. She was upset because there was people behind me. And you guys know each other. Yeah, we know. She's like, Kevin, stop. I'm not in the mood. There's people online, you know? So, it was an obvious parody and 
my haters took that and reposted it and refashioned it and edited it and wrote that how I was abusing this poor black woman and how she was obviously afraid of me and and how I was uh, exerting supremacy over her, mm. which was just absolutely fucking. Wow. And this is what I deal with all the time. Right. And so I go. I do. I told. I think I told you on the break, or it might have been on this. Um, I do when I find this stuff. I file copyright claims, and they do get removed. Right. So it's for me. Politics is. It's a very big thing this day. It's something I'm passionate about because I believe in it, uh, and I and it's also a smart business move for me. Mm -hmm. It really helps my band get exposure. Um, I'm not going to lie about that. And but and w when it comes down to it, Stereo Assassin is and always will be about one thing: music. Listen, right now I'm on this political thing. Yeah. But my next album might be about you know. Growing up in the hardcore scene, right? You know, I, I whatever whatever I feel like doing. Right now, it's it's the political thing, right? But um, I actually have uh, my friend Artie Alexander, who's going to uh, appear on Inhuman Aggression. He's playing with Holly Flanagan's hardcore band. Okay. I think that's the actual name of the band. Holly's War, I think. I don't, I don't think it's Holly's War anymore. Okay. I think it's called Holly Flanagan's Hardcore Band. But okay. he's been touring all over the world with him. And, and Artie's done some leads for me, and he's going to play some more leads. And um, he asked me, he says, listen, Kevin, I just don't want to get into politics stuff. And I said, that's okay, because um, I think I'm going after God now. My this, this next album I have. Right. God, we could agree. <laughs> yeah, on, right? yeah. I'm a, I'm an I'm an atheist, which is funny because a conservative atheist, people like they don't exist. I'm right. like, well, I do exist. Right, I, right. I just pinched myself. I would venture to say most politicians who profess to be um, religious aren't, but they wouldn't get elected if they claimed atheism. Right. So I have an album coming out called Antichrist, which is, I, I, and I got to be honest. Really going to offend you if you're a if you're a religious believer, yeah. especially in Christianity, because I found some fucking samples that are really decimate Christianity and with proof and truth and knowledge and reason. Right. And but it's it's some samples that are said in some really raw way um, before introing and outroing the music, which is just brutally heavy. So. Hey, you've been messing be around with the liberals. You, you might want to get into like having uh, Christians. Well, then the, fighting then, with Christians a little bit. You know, mix. You got to mix it up. Well, if, when I'm fighting the liberals, um, the liberals hate me, and the conservatives love me. Right. And when I'm fighting religion, the liberals love me, and the conservatives hate me. That's I. It, that's always the way. With, like when Hitchens was alive, and yeah. When Sam Harris go, like he goes on Fox it, News because yeah. he's talking about he hates all religions, so he'll say something against Islam, and then, you know, Fox News loves him, yeah. right. and then uh, MSNBC hates him, and then he talks about anti-Christian stuff, and then MSNBC loves him, and Sean Hannity hates him, and it's like, y you know, people can't seem to put it together. You know, but yeah, it just it's, blew that market by fifty percent. Yeah, like right there, you just double the the audience. <laughs> well, right, exactly. Well, I'll tell you this, and 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 and, and the album Antichrist Christ" I'm going to release really is going to spell it out with the samples. Um, and, and Sam Harris poses his question a lot, and Richard Dawkins and and Hitchens did it too. Hitchens, yeah. Um, why is everything everything we know? allowed to be discussed and ridiculed except religion and belief in God. It's right. like, cannot be touched. You cannot talk about it. You cannot discuss it. You just have to believe it, and that's it. And if you don't believe it, you're going to fucking hell. Right. Well, the truth is, I'm an atheist because, and I'm sure most atheists are the, f atheists for this reason. I just see absolutely no evidence of any kind of superior being. In fact, I see more evidence of no of nothing right. existing with you know when i believe they say well he has miracles he's committed miracles i believe in god when he grows back a limb right you know he cured my cancer let him grow back a fucking soldier's arm <laughs> yeah then i'll believe in him 
I you know think, what I mean? I think what it is is like most people don't want to be bummed out. Like if you're like religious and it's like I, I don't think anyone wants to die. I think people are like, oh, we'll just live forever in heaven. So well, yeah, I got bad news for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what happens when you die. Oh, bad news no. from, the, from the truth. It's things. actually not bad news, but it, it's it's a difficult concept to it was hard for me to accept too. It mm-hmm. took a while. It's not easy to become an atheist. It's not easy to become to understand what happens after we die. Um, I say it like this: What do you remember before you were born? Nothing. Okay. You just you didn't exist. You there was you you weren't there was no consciousness. You had no consciousness, and that's probably the same thing. What happens when we die? We just cease to be conscious, yeah. and people really have a hard time with that yeah that's it is, that's what it is it's 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 really hard to accept that it, it is and it no likes the craziest thing is if no i my favorite is listening to hitchens because he's so entertaining with it like sam oh, harris is, i love but you know he's a little like kind of drones on and on yeah. hitchens, hitchens was like personality hitchens it, was they, a douche if, <laughs> like, awesome. it, if it could yeah. be realistic would you want it a lot of atheists would say well if it could be that way then if that was the truth then i would want it and christopher hitchens like absolutely not that's that's like celestial north korea what you can at least die and leave north korea but you want a god that knows all your thoughts knows everything you think judges you about being good at good and bad that's worse than 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 living in a dictatorship like that and i'm like wow yeah and he also says and a god who's especially interested in how you have sex yeah (laughs) it's a scandal yeah that's why i live every day like it's my birthday well (laughs) you know people are like celebrate your birthday and i'm like why i'm like everything i do on my birthday i want to do every fucking day like what different like (laughs) gives a shit 365 give me that i i have the belief that if if and i think i'm taking this paraphrasing um richard dawkins who's who's my favorite atheist um you know if we just understood that we're just infinitely lucky to be born and spend a few decades in the sun enjoying this life and then it stops the world would probably be a better place if we stopped right. relying on this fake figure in the sky to fix thing fix things and we realized it was just up to us the world would probably be a better place oh, absolutely and so i i kind of i agree with that yeah i've never i've i just don't like i said grow back a limb and and i'll believe in you yeah, a lot of those guys get there through reason. They get that, you know, they get to atheism through thinking and fleshing these things out. Not as, you know, the way it's framed through, you know, um, a lot of like, you know, Christianity will, will frame it as you're just a nihilist, a kid right. that doesn't understand anything. And the reality is that a lot of atheism is, you know, they're not there to rain on your parade. It's just they've. They've kind of cut through a lot. They've done a lot of thinking about this and in, are in awe of the world, are in awe of science, <laughs> in awe of like a beautiful world without the woo-woo of all that other stuff. Right. I would consider myself, and I don't know who said it, Hitchens or Dawkins, but I would consider myself what they call themselves, a militant atheist. Mm-hmm. My, the Antichrist album is... Really, uh, um, I, I, I think that's more, atheism is much more important than politics. Mm-hmm. So this really delves into that. With I, I think I only sang on one song, um, but the samples will really fucking wake you up. I mean, really How do you choose on what you want to sing on? Well, the song I sung on the Antichrist when I was talking to Joe Letts from Combi Christ, and I sent him in, he goes, it's vocals. So... <laughs> That's why I put vocals that on it. Simple. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> it was that easy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that, I got a lot. I got a lot to look forward to. I really am grateful for my fans. I'm grateful for friends like George that I've known for years, and everybody that everybody that like. So there's a lot. We talk about my haters a lot. But trust me, there's a lot more supporters. Right. There, there are there are a lot more supporters. They just. Not as noisy, mm-hmm. but they're there and they're buying my music and I and I get residual checks from iTunes every month and Spotify and BMI at the end of the year and I'm not getting rich, right. but I'm, I'm I'm doing my living my dream. Right. You know yeah. what it's like. You know yeah. what it's like, yeah. bro. And so I just want to thank everybody and 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 just make this promise: I will never stop being who I am. Right. <laughs> It's impossible. I couldn't stop if I tried. And Stereo Assassin will, as long as I'm alive, like, 
like George doesn't do music anymore. And, yeah. and, and I had said to him when he told me that, I feel bad because George, was, George is a very talented guy and I always get bummed out when a musician just loses it, loses the feeling. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm I with would, you. I, 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 I do. I kind of get like, I'm just like, I, are you okay? Do you need to eat something? Like, what's yeah. going on with you? I, I, I know that they'll I be- Kevin a, wrote me a, a few times <laughs> over the years to do a song. One I just flaked on, but the one more recently over the past couple of years, I, I was like, I- finished playing music but I kept like and I had a few different guys that were asking me to play music and I would have their songs and I'd be like all right and I'd be like you know what I just don't just don't feel like doing it it's yeah, nothing you told me that. it's nothing crazy just you know sort of it just moved out of me naturally sure. it wasn't traumatic and if one day I want to do it when I'll you do it. when we were on like I have a, another a different podcast that I do and he was a guest when you talked about um how words were more your thing yeah and how once the music thing faded i want to do spoken word yeah you want to do spoken word like it made sense to me it was like okay music was a part of it but then he wanted to kind of like shift it to either like podcast or like the spoken word thing and i was like all right i get it it's it's not like it's out of you it's just moving on to like a different phase transform yeah or artistic endeavors are not gone it's just Going to practice at ten o'clock at night yeah. on a Tuesday doesn't appeal to me anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? No. Some of that stuff has really kind of grown in my dislike. You know, I, last night I'm telling you wrote the tenth song on the new record. What a boner! I'm telling you, you can't, you can't beat <laughs> I'm that. Fucking jealous, once, man. once you get that chorus that. down, yeah. I'm like, uh, yeah, that's a that, good feeling. Got that chorus. Got the chorus. And George, you know, you realize. Um, with the equipment like I do and everything, you don't have to rehearse anymore. You can just spend a thousand dollars and do your music here and never leave your house. Yeah, but even that would just be like, nah, I don't feel like it. Well, I have a feeling we will see another day in the life reunion or an earthling massive. I just have that feeling. It's been kicked around, but nobody's interested. Yeah, nobody's interested. Well, earthling more so we were going to do, but day in life, not at all. No, no. I would like to see Earthling Massive more because no, I mean us within the band. None of us are like interested at all to do it. No, I know, but I would, I would, I would love to see Earthling Massive playing a show with Antichrist. Just yeah, with the Antichrist <laughs> In two years. album. Christ. I, I just, just to see from the perspective that it, what I didn't know then watching you and what I know about the electronics now. Right. I would love to see that, and and I don't know. I just think it would be cool to check it out. So you're saying it's it's the same as disciplinary action, same chances. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds sounds about no. I don't think it's that bad actually. <laughs> Dis- you you will never you will never if, if you guys don't know who's disciplinary action. We've mentioned was, them on every episode every so episode, far. Oh, okay. It's all right, so you bars. know who they are. Stuff with burn. Yeah. All right. So I played bass for them for like, um, <laughs> we I played bass for them for the seven inch. I played on the seven inch, right? And I did a number of shows, and we played the first or second hardcore Super Bowl. But I got really high the night before, and I showed up like three minutes, literally, before we were supposed to go on. And Style was like, this is your last fucking show. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah, right. And it actually was my last show. <laughs> and uh, but, but DA was an amazing band, but, and people keep asking, will they ever get back together? And the answer to that, to that is... Absolutely 100% no, <laughs> unless we find a f- like fake guitarist, which that has been kicked around. Jeff's okay. like, we can get like, you know, somebody from the old school Long Island scene to play guitar. Derek Schilling. Somebody else. <laughs> oh, I had to nail the one. I had to say the one guy. Yeah. <laughs> I just got a look. You guys I, wish you could see. <laughs> I was supposed to play a show with him uh, over the last summer. Oh, you guys were going to do a band together? Yeah. And oh, you were, okay, yeah. you were going to be in his band? Yeah, and um, we never rehearsed. He never told me when the show was. He never answered me again, and th- that was it. And then I asked, called Jaw. I said, "What's Jaw was going to sing?" Jaw was in it. That's right. And, okay. and That's right. I yeah. asked Jaw, "What's this guy's deal?" He goes, "I don't know, Kevin. One time he was supposed to do a show. We're two minutes before going on. His wife called and told him to go home. He packed up his guitar, his guitar and left. So I, you can't really hitch your reins to someone like that." I like the guy. Yeah. Me, but me I can't I, mean, I can't do that stuff. Yeah. So DA may have happened one day, but Stereo Assassin will continue. All right. Fantastic. I think we've uh successfully yeah. offended everyone, I would imagine. 
I, you know, we offended them and then we brought them back. I think right, we won a lot of people over today. And, you know, the name of the show is If I Rule the World. So yes. um, we ask all our guests, if you rule the world, what would that world look like? I'm sure you've never thought about this yeah. before. <laughs> no, I, I think you might have answered it already. What would it look like or, or, or what would I do? Yeah, it, what, would yeah. Do? what would you do? Honestly, I... Because of a lot of things that have been going on, the first thing that I would do is I would I would have the police go and pick out every single person who's made really derogatory remarks against me on Facebook <laughs> and, and just put them in a ring with me okay. one at a time and let me get what I dream about doing every night that I can't because they're on a computer. But if, if I can rule the world, honestly, and it sounds stupid... I would just want people, I, I would just want the fucking violence in the world to stop. Mm-hmm. There's just so much violence and disgusting things that you see. Somebody sent me a video last night of a guy getting skinned alive. He's like, is what? this real? And I, and it, Who are you hanging out with? Yeah, no, what, I mean, it, 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 it was like bizarre. And I was like, dude, please don't send me shit. Like, it was yeah, the most nasty. offensively horrible thing you could ever imagine. And I was like, I don't want to look at this stuff. Yeah. I don't, because this is not the world that I want to live in. Because... God, it was just fucking horrible. Yeah. So if I ruled the world, I I would find a way for just just peace, man. Just except for in the ring. Yeah. No, no MMA fighting and yeah, kicking yeah, each other. Yeah. You know, agreeable, g- yeah, agreeable. They got, they got gloves on, obviously. Right. But I, I I just I think there's way too much violence in the world, and way too much hatred. And and to be honest, and I think a lot of it stems from from religion. Mm-hmm. And I would like to see that end. And that that that's truthfully how I feel right. it might sound like cheesy and cliche no, every, but... you know everyone who answers that question so far yeah, yeah. says the same thing like mm-hmm. I guess it's maybe because they feel like it's so far from anything that could possibly happen uh, but everyone has that same kind of like well this is cheesy but this is what it is but it's everyone's kind of like on the same page so it's a very genuine yeah it feeling. always comes down to like can't we all just get along yeah right That's exactly like, well you know and then somebody's gonna say but look at how violent your music is well but th- but that's how I'm artistically expressing that's, myself. Yeah, Doesn't mean I want to go Slayer. Doesn't to go out and murder people. Robert De Niro was on Goodfellas. Right. Yeah, Martin Scorsese. You know, like and they're that's not- my point exactly. <laughs> so you know, there, there's other ways you can you can be, I guess, pseudo violent. <laughs> it's art. It it's art. It doesn't. It's, it's not. You know, words and music and movies are not the same as violence. Yeah. And I think that that's a little bit into what we were talking about. The Facebook fake world is that people think now words are violence. You know, I can, I can My attack you. Is. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So that, that that if I ruled the world, definitely I would just find a way to end fucking violence. It's just. It's just too. It's too horrible out there, and I don't think anybody would disagree. Liberals, conservatives, anybody. Yeah. And, and, and that's it. Kevin, awesome. bringing them all together. Definitely. Right in the end, right at the I last know, yeah. second. Right there. Brought them all <laughs> together. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Threw you for a loop. <laughs> You're full of surprises, Kevin. So, uh, Stereo yeah, definitely check out Stereo Assassins. I was listening to your music today on Spotify, which I love. And that's it, man. Looking forward to all the other projects. Awesome meeting you. Yeah, you too, brother. So. Thank you very much. You can, you got, Good and George, you, you know, I love you, bro. A, I've known George, years. Jesus Christ, don't, we, we got to be coming on 25, 26 years now. Since the, yeah, back was, DA, yeah. Yeah, right very there. tight scene. And there's a great podcast. I've, I told you offline, I've listened to uh, the Tim Williams one, I've yep. listened to the Daryl Palumbo one, um, and there was another one. I caught half of it. I forget who it was. But you guys do a really professional job, and uh, I hope you keep it up and you get good guys. Awesome. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you. All right. And All right. thank you, everybody. And, and go buy my albums or I'll kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Take care. If I rule the world, I love them, love them, baby.